Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. All right, okay, so I am filming this on Halloween. Uh, it's the 31st of August. Not August, the 31st of October. Mm, let's get the month right. So this is kind of going to be my monthly roundup for October but it's also going to kind of be something else um and you'll kind of understand as I sort of get into this um and it's pretty much based on kind of the big thing that I have done this month technically one of the big things I've done this month but the other big thing I'm not quite ready to start talking about yet so okay here we go um so I know I think at least in one of my vlogs over the last few months I have mentioned that I identify as a demisexual panromantic or demipan or demisexual pansexual depending on how I feel like saying it um for me so this this is what this these terms mean for me personally and different people who identify as demisexual and pansexual or demisexual panromantic may experience things slightly differently. These are just the labels that I feel fit what I experience best, which is why they are the ones I have gone for. So what it means for me is that 99% of the time I'm probably feeling pretty asexual. Um, I don't really experience very strong sexual attraction when I do experience sexual attraction and it is very rare and it does for me take a close emotional connection to a person before I even sort of start maybe possibly finding them attractive um to the point where in my my last relationship um I decided not to worry about whether or not I found him physically attractive and more worried about whether or not I felt emotionally connected to him and I did I, I was genuinely in love with him um, during the course of our relationship and that was enough to allow us to get a working relationship it was enough you know there was enough of an understanding between us for us to have a genuinely working relationship even though I didn't necessarily find him attractive um, in, in the way that most people would find their partners attractive. I'm not saying that I found him completely repulsive. It wasn't like that either. I don't I don't very often feel strongly repulsed from people <laughs> on the same in, in like the same way that I'm not attracted to them. I'm not necessarily repulsed by them either. Just this sort of very neutral kind of feeling uh, when I'm in a when I'm in a relationship with someone if I'm focusing on the emotions that I am feeling, it's quite often it's enough to, to get me through that sort of, hey, I don't necessarily find this person physically attractive, but I am emotionally very close to them and I trust them and I'm, you know, willing to do certain things for them at certain times to show them that I care about them and that, you know, this is more than just a friendship that we have, but I don't necessarily need those things for the relationship to work. It's just, you know, you know, it, it, sometimes it's nice to do certain things to show people that you care about them that are a little bit more on the physical side and it's like one of those give or take sort of situations for me, really. Um, and in the same vein, so the, where the pansexual part of it comes in is that I do consider myself to be at least a form of gender blind um, in that for me, the gender of the person that I am with, whether it's as a friend or as something more than a friend, is irrelevant to how I feel about them as a person. That is not to say that I don't recognise that they have a gender. I understand that they do have a sense of gender, um, whether it be male, female, whether it be trans, whether it be non-binary, whether it be fluid. And, you know, whether it be a really strong sense of gender or a really weak sense of gender, I understand that they as a person have a sense of gender, um, you know, in, in whatever form that it takes. But that's completely irrelevant as to why I like them <laughs> or dislike them, depending on who the person is. Um, so I wouldn't say I was necessarily 100 percent 
gender blind in the fact that, uh, you know, I think a lot of people think of gender blindness just being a complete don't see gender at all. I don't think, I don't know if there are people out there who are like that. If, if there are, I'd be really interested to talk to them to sort of get their sort of, um, their sort of opinion on how all of it kind of works. But I'm, I'm very much of that sort of mindset where gender is kind of irrelevant. To me, it's just, okay, it's a thing, there is a spectrum of it, but I'm not going to like you anymore if you identify as a purple spotted monkey. <laughs> I don't I don't really care if you're a nice person, you're a nice person. That's that's the bit that matters to me. Um so for me the that's kind of where the pansexual side of it comes into because I'm not looking at the people that I'm with in terms of their gender identity um, or anything like that. It's just, if they are a nice person, they're a nice person. And if I feel emotionally close to them, then I might want there to be more. But at the same time, I might not want there to be more. It's, it's you know, I'm, I'm still a human being. I still have some control over <laughs> my choices. <laughs> um, I hope this kind of like babbling kind of makes sense. As I said, I'm trying to describe this in the way that I feel about it and how I understand my own sense of sexual identity. Um, as I said, it's it's very much 99% of the time I feel pretty much asexual and then that 1% of the time where I have a strong emotional connection to somebody I might feel something more, but it's not necessarily something sexual and it is not dependent on their gender or gender identity, um, if that makes sense. And I, I, I apologise if any of the way that I've sort of talked through that is offensive to anybody. I'm trying really hard not to because I know a lot of these issues can be really sensitive for some people. I, as I said, I'm, I'm sorry if I've worded anything badly. I'm just trying to get this across in the way that I understand myself and that I've come to understand myself um, over many years. So why am I starting off my roundup of October talking about this? Um, well, one of the biggest things I did in October was finally come out to my parents, which is one of those things where I've never felt like I needed to do it. I haven't come out to them because I feel like it's something they would have issues with um, or something that they would need to you know accept me for because I, I've always known just based on the type of parent, uh, people my parents are that they would accept me no matter what that as long as I was happy they would be fine with whatever choices I was making. Um, so I, I, coming out to them has always been one of those things that I haven't put off because I was worried or afraid, um, but more because I just felt like, you know, if, if I suddenly came home with someone they weren't necessarily expecting me to come home with they would just be cool with it they would just they would just go with it um they wouldn't necessarily need a an explanation as to why that had happened um but at the same time you know i am currently single single and happy perfectly happy being single um but writing a lot of the very lgbtq plus uh, heavily themed and heavily uh, related books that I've been writing recently, I have become very uncomfortable with the assumption that I am straight. Even coming from people that, you know, you know, I know wouldn't care one way or another, like my parents, I have become increasingly uncomfortable with the assumption that I'm straight just because I haven't stated otherwise. Um, and yeah, it, 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 as I said, it's one of those things that very much 
because of the types of stories that I am currently writing, it has become more and more pressing in my little brain space, um, which has made me kind of go, you know what, let's kind of stop letting people assume things um, and actually, you know, have a more open dialogue with my family. <laughs> my original plan was to do this back in March. <laughs> so in January, I'd actually, on Facebook, I, I took off all of my, my like, I, I hid it from various members of my family um, just because I didn't want it getting back to my parents before I had a chance to speak to my parents because there are certain ways you go about doing this and that would not have been the correct way of going about doing this. Um, but anyway, I did a Facebook message group post for all of, actually I think it's mostly for the benefit of my work colleagues because once you took away, <laughs> once you took away my family, that was a, that's pretty much what I've got on my Facebook. Um, basically saying like, you know, I'm, 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 identify as a uh, dim pan and this is what it means this is you know how i am and where i am with it um with the plan of you know in in march for my birthday around my birthday because i was taking the time off um i knew i'd be seeing my parents you know talking to them face to face about you know where i am where where i am in in terms of being happy being single being okay being on my own and you know why you know basically what how I identify as a uh, demi um, demi pan and then lockdown happened on my birthday and you know I was already in that kind of very nervous state about doing it anyway because although I did genuinely believe like I do always have always genuinely believe my parents would just accept me no matter what Having the lockdown happen when it did made it feel very inappropriate to kind of go, hey, I'm coming out, deal with it. <laughs> You're not going to get to see me for months and months and months. And this is what this is what I'm deciding to do. Um, so yeah, I I kind of use lockdown as a bit of an excuse to put off what I had originally set out to do this year, which is to basically live a more honest and genuine existence because, you know, I want to be a more genuine and honest person. I want to live a positive and happy life. I had planned to attend Pride this year. Lockdown kind of ruined those plans because, you know, the world situation is what it is at the moment um but I very much wanted to sort of start moving forward this year in a way that felt more comfortable to me and and as years gone on I've realized that means a lot of different things as well um and I'm now exploring those as those those other things um as well as I said that there, there, there are a few other things that have happened this month um, that I am not ready yet to talk about um, for one reason or another. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I very, very much use lockdown as kind of this excuse to keep my head buried under the cover. Um, just because it never felt like, you know, when you've, when you've got like so little time with your parents, um, I never really felt like the, the right time or the right opportunity. And then I just got to this month. I got to October. And a lot of the other things that were starting to sort of niggle at me for one reason or another kind of made me go, OK, you can't put this off any longer. You need to start opening a dialogue with your parents um, just so they know where you're at, just so that they know you're OK. Um, so I started off with an email to my mum 
Um, I've, I've always been much better at expressing myself through writing than through talking to someone. Um, so, yeah, I, I sent a, a lovely long email to my mum's. Um, and the following day, I got a phone call. Um, and her biggest concern was just making sure that I was happy. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm perfectly happy. I'm OK being on my own. If I meet someone, I meet someone. If I don't, I don't. I, I will be happy either way. Um, and as for the, the other big thing I know that I want, which is having children, if I have to find a way of doing it on my own. I'll find a way of doing it on my own. I, you know, I would rather have a child than a partner. That's pretty much where I've been at for like the last year or so, <laughs> at least. Um, I mean, it would be nice to, to have a supportive partner as well, but I don't feel that is necessary. Um, you know, as, as long as I, I'm smart about it, as long as I, you know, I'm making sure that I'm financially as supported as I can be, you know, through my own means, then there's no reason why I can't just figure out how to have a child solo. There are plenty of ways for someone to have a child solo if that is what they want. Um, and my mum's completely okay with that idea. <laughs> Um, I, I, you know, obviously, as a concerned parent, you know, she she still has a you know a few kind of like you know will make me think about certain things I haven't necessarily thought of. Um, but she's relatively okay with the idea that if I want to have a child solo and I find a way of, of managing to do that, then and I'm happy doing that, then she's gonna be perfectly fine with that. So, um, and then yeah, put it off for about a week. Um, and there's this, ah, there, were, there were kind of a couple of reasons for this. Um, so again, I wasn't that worried that my, that my dad would react badly. Um, there was a little bit more of a concern with him just because of how my parents' marriage ended and the reasons for why my parents' marriage ended. Um, but I was still like, I've, I still had parents that had brought me up to be tolerant, to be open-minded, to be understanding. So 90% of my brain space was like, yeah, no, th th my dad's going to turn out to be the person that I know he is. He's going to be okay with this. Um, as long as he knows I'm happy. Um, but there was still that 10% of, is he going to think that I'm just mm -hmm. saying this? to hurt him um, because I want to be closer to my mum. Obviously it's not what this is about at all, <laughs> but there's still that, there's still that little tiny, the little tiny niggling bit of doubt. Um, so again, I sent a message rather than use the phone or waited for a face-to-face. -face. Um, I used the conversation, the phone conversation I had with mum, and what, and basing it on the email that I sent her as well, um, to formulate exactly how I was going to to say it, so that I hopefully wouldn't have an awkward phone call with him afterwards. Um, my dad and I are both quite introverted, um, and uh, I I always find phone conversations with him a little bit awkward um I'm never quite sure how to speak to him and I think he he feels the same way back um and obviously I do love my dad <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't bother coming out to somebody that I didn't care about um but yeah um I, I sort of wanted to try and avoid an awkward conversation. I, would, I didn't, you know, want to rule out there being a phone conversation at all, if that's what he felt was needed. I just didn't want it to be an awkward phone conversation. That's what I wanted to avoid. I wanted to avoid something that felt really awkward, um, which I, I felt like if I worded myself incorrectly, he would need more information um, and I would end up with a very awkward phone call. I didn't end up with a phone call at all. I ended up with a, a, a message saying, as long as you're happy, it's fine. I don't care <laughs> or something to that effect. <laughs> I, it was more of a, I just want you to be happy. Um, after which, because I'd already come out, I like my younger brother is the only one I actually came out to in person. <laughs> so my younger brother had a nice heartfelt 
conversation um, in his car um, when he was driving me home one time. Um, my mom got a nice, long, heartfelt email sort of explaining myself. My dad got a refined, um, just as heartfelt um, message. Um, my older brother got a paragraph was basically, hey, I'm Danny Fan. You cool? We cool? How you doing? <laughs> and it wasn't quite as blase as that, but I, I basically sent that. I got the response back from, from my dad first. Um, and after I sort of gotten over the, because and, and you, you do feel a little bit emotional and um, my, my friend, the one who does the covers for me, um, summed it up the best and he said, um, that, you know, even though you know that they're going to have a positive reaction to what you're saying, there's still that, that little tiny bit of doubt for you. And as I said, it was especially more there with my dad because there were other factors involved, because there were other things um, that I, you know, I, I had to consider when it came to him. Um, I did have a little bit of a cry afterwards. <laughs> um, it was sort of a very happy kind of cry, but it was... It was that kind of okay. I've I've done this now. There's no more, you know, hiding behind anything. They they know, you know, who I am. There's no going to be not we're not going to be any more assumptions. And then sort of after it, it didn't take me that long to calm down because it was it was more that kind of oh my god, I've just done something really hard and it's gone the way that I thought it would go. But it's still, you know, it's still a hard thing to do. Um, I then decided I needed to complete, you know, what is the core of my family, what is the, you know, and do my older brother. <laughs> and I didn't, like, I didn't feel like I needed to give him the same level ex of explanation, because um, I know my older brother is just cool and will just roll with any anything, he doesn't really care. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> He's so laid back. Um, so I didn't, I didn't intentionally make it sound really callous. I, I'm hoping it didn't come off as being really callous. It was more, I needed something to kind of make myself laugh. Um, and the way I sort of did it made me laugh and made me feel kind of good about the way that I'd done it with him because he, he, wasn't, he wasn't any kind of stress. Like I, I always knew he'd be like the least stressful of, of all the people that, you know, I felt I needed to to do this for so yeah that pretty much sums up I mean, you know as I said there have been other things going on this October obviously the new clothing I mean I know this jacket's not new but the top is <laughs> the trousers are as well um so yeah I know other things have gone on this month as I said new clothing has been one of the other things that have gone on this month um that's kind of the the big the big thing that I've done this month that I feel like I can talk about at this stage, um, it's the, for the most part, it's been kind of that thing that I've sort of been hinting at um, the last couple of vlogs where I've gone, there, there's something that I need to talk about, there, there's something I want to talk about. Um, and that, that was basically after I'd come out to my mum, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I, I do want to sort of, sort of talk about that kind of experience and, you know, why I've decided to do it now and why I haven't been doing it before, uh, why, why I hadn't done it before. Um, and then I was like, I don't really want to have to do two of these. <laughs> so I should wait until until after I'd, I'd come out to my dad. Um, and literally when I filmed the last vlog, I had the message to my dad typed out um but because it was a work day for him um i did wait until the end of the, what i hoped was the end of his work day before sending it so that you know if he you know if he wanted to call he wouldn't have anything so i mean no, he's working from home at the moment but he's still supposed to be working from home <laughs> so i didn't you know I, I wanted to make sure that his work day had finished so that if he felt like he wanted to call because i wanted to give him the option of calling if that's what he felt like he needed to do even though I didn't really want an awkward phone call, <laughs> I still wanted to give him the option because, you know, that's that's fair. That's, that's you know, the fair thing to do. So, like, when I filmed the last vlog, I literally had that message typed out um, 
and my tablet ready to send just had to wait for the end of the day to sort of send it and that's that's why I was kind of like yeah I know I kind of know what I want to talk about next time and like between filming that and then filming this I was kind of like oh yeah it's all supposed to be my month roundup <laughs> but I think I think this kind of rounds up my October um the the sort of the impactful things that have happened to me this October has been coming out to my parents um and I've been like dying to sort of, there are like a few people in work that I've been like dying to sort of like have this conversation with but work is so busy at the moment I'm like this this isn't this is not important to anybody but me um hence why I'm talking about it on my blog because my blog is all about all the things that are important to me <laughs> Selfish content time. Um, but yeah, so I know this is kind of a weird one to have done as sort of a double hitter, which is basically this is my I came out to my parents vlog and my roundup October vlog. But since my coming out to my parents was kind of my October. <laughs> Apart from one or two other things I don't want to talk about just yet. Um, yeah. Yeah, let's let's leave it at that. Okay, so with that all done and said, I hope you guys have found this one sort of interesting. Once again, if my explanation for how I feel about my sexual identity is a bit confusing or if I've not worded myself quite right I do apologize for that um I hope you can kind of get the gist of what I'm trying to say I'm not I wasn't trying to offend anybody with how I was putting it it's just how I understand it in my brain space my brain space isn't always the most logical thing most people's brain spaces aren't the most logical thing I'm just hoping that how I worded myself didn't offend anybody because that was not my intention. Um, I hope you guys are looking forward to seeing what I'm talking about next time. I'll probably be going back to the writing, to be honest. <laughs> That's so much less stressful to have to talk about. Um, and I will see you guys next time. See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, Feel free to check out some of my others, and if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya!